Well, sorry to say, uh, my old phone broke, and somehow trying to transfer my footage of carving this snakehead to this point is lost to the ether world. So, I'll continue on a little bit. What a shame. I've been using a knife the whole time. I'll give you a little recap. About two minutes into uh, part two, I was trying to use a Dremel tool to do this handle palm swell, and I broke my Dremel tool. Bam! Just like that. And I said, well, guess I'm going to have to do it the hard way. And I started whittling and carving this snakehead here. So I'm going to get back to it. And sorry that I don't have the footage up to this point. Hasn't been a very interesting process anyway, sitting here. Almost stepped on him. Man. 
walked right by him and stirred him up. Burgle, you stay back. Man, all, all three of us walked right by it. You stay back. Woo, that was a close one. I stirred him up. I walked right next to him, right by him. Lucky I didn't step on him. I ain't gonna kill him. We need, we need him. Hopefully I give him a pass. He gave me a pass. I give him a pass. See, that's the thing, like, unless you step on a copperhead, they're not gonna bite you. I didn't expect to see him on the tracks. That's the thing, let your guard down. You know, I'm, I'm always uh, checking out in the woods. Yeah, he ain't hurting nobody. He didn't bite me, I'm not gonna kill him. There's no point. You kill all the copperheads, there's gonna be more mice. He's just worried about me not killing him and I'm worried about him not biting me. That's funny, I'm carving on this handle here. That was supposed to be a copperhead. <laughs> Thanks for giving me a pass, dude. You give me a pass, I give you a pass. Let's hope our paths don't cross again. All right, I'm gonna let him go. I guess from here on out, I better be a little more careful walking these tracks. I always let my guard down walking along these railroad tracks, not really thinking about a snake being there. They blend in so good that, man, my boots stepped right next to that dude, and all it did was stir him up a little bit. If I'd stepped on him, it'd have been a different story. He would have bit me. And I just got bit by a damn, uh, some kind of wasp, too, right there. So I'm worrying about that, thinking about that, trudging along the tracks, and I stir up this dude. Woo! <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Good boys. Good boy, Burgle. You know, I bet you there's been so many times we're out in the woods or walking along somewhere and I step over or right by a copperhead and I don't even know I did it. Same with my dogs. There's been so many times that they stirred one up, and then I saw it. But they were all they were doing was walking by it, stirred it up a little bit. You know, they're not aggressive. They don't want to waste their venom on you. They want to waste it on that little critter they're trying to get tonight once it gets dark. He's just warming up on the tracks, trying to get warmed up before dark. Pretty cool. See, now I'm all flipping. <laughs> Got me a little jumpy now. Got me a little jumpy. It's been really hard to figure out a position to hold this handle while I'm carving on it to make it not look like 
I should be putting out an OnlyFans video. <laughs> It's all right, Bonzo. Don't worry about it. All right, let the guy be. He's a good boy. Alright. What do you want?
I know if I was a professional wood carver, I wouldn't have to be using any sandpaper. But I'm not a professional wood carver. Just trying to give this handle I carved a little character.
Ah, you little bastard. <laughs> All right, what we got? I have, I just, I wanted to make this a copperhead's head, but it just didn't turn out to be a copperhead. It is what it is. I guess it could still possibly be a uh, venomous snake. Just ended up carving some things in there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue to carve. Just want to show y'all how how far I've come. On the right, that is uh, Elder Futhark rune algies, and it is a protection rune. On the left is Uru's, and that is a rune of power. I figured theirs would be good to carve onto this double bit axe. Having all these little uh, carvings and things in here actually helps me to get a little bit of a purchase on this palm swell. Back here, there is my maker's mark. I try and put that on everything I make. Good boy, Burgle. We're getting old, Bubba. Getting old. Just not too old, right, Burgle? Yeah, buddy. Yeah.
I already put one coat on last night. It was just too dark to, you know, make a difference with making a video. Wouldn't have came out right. So I threw a coat on. And man, it's doing just what I wanted to. It's darkening this up really nice. Just making this apple wood look beautiful. I have this little mixture I do of boiled linseed oil with some uh, pine pitch, pine tar that I render out of fat wood. And then I heat them in together. Makes a really nice little, you know, treatment to put on all my tool handles. Burgle, you don't want this. Make you sick. I usually put like I usually try to put at least two or three coats on each handle I'll probably just end up throwing two coats on here and then after that I usually uh, rub some snow snow seal treatment for boots into the handle works really nice sometimes I'll do beeswax but I found the snow seal works really nice too. It makes it look pretty sweet. So after the first coat of my mixture here, I like to do a light sanding. I'm using like, you know, this is like 300 grit, 320. Just to get the surface roughed up just a tiny little bit. Then what I do is I'll take one paper towel and give it a good wipe down, kind of knock off any kind of sanding dust. Then I like to rough up another paper towel get it a little softer, open up the fibers a little bit, and I end up using this to apply this mixture I made. Try and get it down in these little crevices and cracks. The linseed oil really darkens and brings out. Well, sir, it, it you know it makes different woods different woods react differently to the uh, boiled linseed oil and the linseed oil. Well, one thing that you can uh, bet on, one thing that's usually very certain, is that it will darken whatever kind of wood you're putting it on. And they usually bring out a little bit of the grain. Another way to kind of help bring out that grain is before you put your linseed oil on, if you go over the wood with some rubbing alcohol, and that kind of opens up the grain somehow. And then when you put your linseed oil down, it kind of soaks it up in the grain a little more, makes it more pronounced, which I didn't do with this. Don't feel like I really needed to. I just put like, try not to put too heavy of a coat on your handles. You know, light coats are better. Wait about 10 or 15 minutes. 
and wipe off whatever has not soaked in. You don't want it to be sticky and grimy with the uh, BLF. Also, I found try your best not to get this linseed oil on the steel of whatever tool, your axes or knives. It kind of does something funny. It, it kind of like darkens up the steel and kind of, I don't like the way it looks. I try to keep the linseed oil off of my actual tools and just keep it on the tool handle. I like that original patina. I don't want to have that poor linseed oil patina. And this apple wood is soaking this linseed oil up pretty good. So I might put one more coat on late this evening or tomorrow morning. Best thing to do is wait 24 hours in between coats. Do light coats 24 hours in between. That's how I've found like it works the best for me. Now, it may not be the best for you, but it's the best for me. Sorry, right, Burgle. I'll get back to you all in a little bit. Try and work around that knot. This is a beast. Good guy. I don't know. About knee height. She's a big one, we're gonna see. This is some very well seasoned ash. It's just a log that I never ended up splitting. Find out. Look out, Papa. You gotta look out, baby. I want you to get hurt. All right, boys. Look at that. Come on. Look out. Come on. Go. Oh, look out. Burble, go on. Ah, 
gas is about right. Oh, got her. Feels good. She's long and tall. do one where we're trying to just barrel on through. Fergal, knock it off. Kind of dangerous doing this up on the stump, especially being this tall and long. video at some point uh, right off the bat I can definitely say I can feel this handle flexing when I'm making impact which is extremely promising it feels really good I made it thin enough to give it a little flex make it too thick you end up breaking the handle quick in my opinion but appreciate y'all watching catch you on the next one